So dear people of God, it's time for us to begin. We therefore begin our Bible discussion in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Gracious and ever living God, we thank and bless you for this opportunity that you have given us to read your word, to discuss it, so as to increase our faith in you. We ask that you, O Lord, will send your Holy Spirit to as the altar of your word, that will come to a deeper appreciation of the words that are scripted in there. Pray that you, O Lord, will also grant us all the blessings that we need, especially as we use your word in prayer. And we ask all these through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Dear people of God, you are welcome to this evening's Bible discussion. Today we are looking at the final plague that God brought upon the land of Egypt. That's the tenth plague, the death of the firstborn sons of man and beast alike. Then we shall move on to one of the very important scriptural passages about Judaism, their first festival, the Passover. That festival which will remind them always of the mighty works that God wrought for them, especially as he delivered them from the land of Egypt, the house of slavery. So today we are looking at chapters 11 and 12 of the book of Exodus. I kindly request that two of us who volunteer to take these two chapters. One will take the chapter 11 and the other will take the chapter 12. So if you are ready to help us do this, kindly unmute yourself and take the reading for us. Good evening, Father. I'll take chapter 11. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Okay. So I am, I am reading from the Good News Bible. Good news. So chapter eleven. Then the Lord, yes. Then the Lord said to Moses, "I will send only one more punishment on the king of Egypt and his people. After that, he will let you live. In fact, he will drive all of you out of here. Now speak to the people of Israel." and tell all of them to ask their neighbors for gold and silver jewelry. The Lord made the Egyptians respect the Israelites. Indeed, the officials and all the people considered Moses to be a very great man. Moses then said to the king, The Lord says, At about midnight, I will go through Egypt, and every firstborn son in Egypt will die from the king's son who is heir to the throne to the son of the slave woman who grinds corn. The firstborn of all the cattle will die also. There will be loud crying all over Egypt, such as there has never been before or ever will be again. But not even a dog will bark at Israelites or their animals. Then you will know that I, the Lord, make a distinction between the Egyptians and the Israelites. Moses concluded by saying, All your officials will come to me and bow down before me, and they will beg me to take all my people and go away. After that, I will leave. Then in great anger, Moses left the king. The Lord had said to Moses, The king will continue to, receive, to refuse to listen to you in order that I may do more of my miracles in Egypt. Moses and Aaron performed all these miracles before the king, but the Lord made him stubborn and he would not let the Israelites leave his country. This is Thank the word so of the much. Lord. Okay. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Mama Nyamike. Can I please have somebody taking the 12th chapter for us? The 12th chapter. A volunteer to take the 12th chapter.
Any volunteer? Okay. Can I do that? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. The Passover. Yes, the Passover. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in Egypt. This month is to be the first month of the year for you. Give these instructions to the whole community of Israel. On the 10th day of this month, each man must choose either a lamb or a young goat for his household. If the family is too small, in it's too small to eat a whole animal, he and his next door neighbor may, may share an animal. In proportion to the number of people and the amount that each person can eat. You may choose either a sheep or a goat, but it must be a one-year-old male without any defects. Then on the evening of the 14th day of the month, the whole community of Israel will kill the animals. The people are to take some of the blood and put it on the door posts. And and above the above the doors of the houses in which the animals are to be eaten. That night, the meat is to be roasted and eaten with bitter herbs and with bread made without yeast. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled, but eat it roasted whole, including the head, the legs, and the internal organs. You must not leave any of it until morning. If any is left over, it must be burnt. You are to eat it quickly, for you are to be dressed for travel with your sandals on your feet and your stick in your hand. It is the Passover festival to honor me, the Lord. On that, night, on that night, I will go through the land of Egypt, killing every firstborn male, both human and animal, and punishing all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood on the door, the blood on the doorposts will be a sign to mark the houses in which you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you and will not harm you when I punish the Egyptians. You must be, you must celebrate this day as a religious festival to remind you of what I, the Lord, have done. Celebrate it for all the time to come. The Festival of Unleavened Bread. The Lord said, for seven days, you must not eat any bread made with yeast. Eat only unleavened bread. On the first day, you are to get rid of all the yeast in your houses. For if anyone during those 
seven days, eats bread with, made with yeast. He shall no longer be considered one of my people. On the first day, and again on the seventh day, you are to eat for, you are to meet for worship. No work is to be done on those days, but you may prepare food. Keep this festival because it was on this day that I brought your tribes out of Egypt. For all time, for all time to come, you must celebrate this day as a festival. From the evening of the 14th day of the first month in the evening or the 21st day, you must not you must not eat any bread made with yeast. For seven days, no yeast must be, be found in your houses. For if anyone If anyone retrieved one or oh, I'm sorry, foreign its bread made with yeast, he shall no longer be considered one of my people. Can somebody continue, please? Hello. Oops. Hello, our dear mother is asking if someone can continue. <laughs> so, mommy, you ended on the verse. Verse 20. Verse 20. Yes. So, can we have so someone? I can, I can continue. You want to continue? Oh, okay. Yes, Nyamike, please. Uh, Mama, yes, please continue. continue for us. Thank okay. you so much. <clears throat> the first Passover. Moses called for all the leaders of Israel and said to them, Each of you is to choose a lamb or a young goat and kill it, so that your families can celebrate Passover. Take a sprig of hyssop, dip it in the bowl containing the animal's blood, and wipe the blood on the doorpost and the beam above the door of your house. No one of you is to leave the house until morning. When the Lord goes through Egypt to kill the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the beams and the doorposts, and he will not let the angel of death enter your houses and kill you. You and your children must obey these rules forever. When you enter the land that the Lord has promised to give you, you must perform this ritual. When your children ask you, what does this ritual mean? You will answer, it is the sacrifice of Passover to honor the Lord because he passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt. He killed the Egyptians, but spared us. The Israelites knelt down and worshiped. They, then they went and did what the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. The death of the firstborn. At midnight, the Lord killed all the firstborn sons in Egypt, from the king's son, who was heir to the throne, to the son of the prisoner in the dungeon. All the firstborn of the animals were also killed. That night, the king, his officials, and all the other Egyptians were awakened. There was loud crying throughout Egypt, because there was not one whom in which there was not a dead son. That same night, the king sent for Moses and Aaron and said, Get out, you and your Israelites. Leave my country. Go and worship the Lord as you asked. Take your sheep, goats, and cattle and leave. Also pray for a blessing on me. The Egyptians urged the people to hurry and leave the country. They said, We will. Oh, we will all be dead if you don't leave. So the people filled their baking pans 
with unleavened dough, wrapped them in clothing, and carried them on their shoulders. The Israelites had done as Moses had said, and had asked the Egyptians for gold and silver jewelry and for clothing. The Lord made the Egyptians respect the people and give them what they asked for. In this way, the Israelites carried away the wealth of the Egyptians. The Israelites leave Egypt. The Israelites set out on foot from Ramesses to Succoth. There were about 600,000 men, not counting women and children. A large number of other people and many sheep, goats, and cattle also went with them. They baked unleavened bread from the dough that they had brought out of Egypt, for they had been driven out of Egypt so suddenly that they did not have time to get their food ready or to prepare leavened dough. The Israelites had lived in Egypt for 430 years. On the day the 430 years ended, all the tribes of the Lord's people left Egypt. It was a night when the Lord kept watch to bring them out of Egypt. This same night is dedicated to the Lord for all the time to come as a night when the Israelites must keep watch. Regulations about Passover. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, These are the Passover regulations. No foreigner shall eat the Passover meal, but any slave that you have bought may eat it if you circumcise him first. No temporary resident or hired worker may eat it. The whole meal must be eaten in the house in which it was prepared. It must not be taken outside. And do not break any of the animal's bones. The whole community of Israel must celebrate this festival, but no uncircumcised man may eat it. If a foreigner has settled among you and wants to celebrate Passover to honor the Lord, you must first circumcise all the males of his household. He is then to be treated like a native-born Israelite and may join in the festival. The same regulations apply to native-born Israelites and to foreigners who settle among you. All the Israelites obeyed and did what the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. On that day, the Lord brought the Israelite tribes out of Egypt. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we thank our dear mothers for reading the chapters 11 and 12 for us. As you have realized, the chapter 11 is very short, and then the chapter 12 is very long. And so they complement one another. I want to ask this first question. Can we identify five special or miraculous things that happened or will happen according to what God said to Moses in the chapter 11 of Exodus? I mean, let us identify five. If you don't get to all the five, at least you should be able to land on four. Some special things that will happen in chapter 11. Anything that's out of the blue, yeah, will happen. Uh, what are the special things that will happen in chapter chapter 11? Anything special, anything peculiar, anything out of the blue? Father. Yes, please. Father, yeah. So the firstborn male of every house, every Egyptian household will be killed, as well as their mm. animal, also the male in uh, of every animal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, he, so, so what will, what to will make this special? You, you you have left out something. Uh, because the Egyptians. Uh, sorry, the the Israel Israel Israelites will be spared. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. if dog will back at any Israelites. Yes, so that's one of the special things that is going to happen. That whereas the firstborn sons of the Egyptians, from Pharaoh, the man on the throne, to the 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 woman in the dungeon, the firstborn son of the woman in the dungeon, 
when it comes to the Israelites, not even a dog will bark that someone has died. So this, this is something special, that people are going to die, but there's going to be a distinction in those who are going to die. And this, I see very special, very wondrous. Any other? Any other? Any other special thing that 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 would happen? The very the, the, the opening statement of God. That there's something special in there. The opening statement of, of, of God to, to Moses. There's something special in there. See when somebody makes a statement that the person brings in a twist in the emphasis, that one is also, also special. Who, who, who can identify that for us? Father, Father. Yes. Okay. Uh, God told Moses to tell the Israelites to ask the Egyptian for gold and silver. See, this is something special. Remember, the Israelites were slaves. And who are you a slave to go and ask your masters? Something, yeah. This is a term. See, go, go and see, go and see them. The slave masters, the people who are yeah. above you. Okay. Go and ask them for yeah. silver and gold. Go and ask them for precious. Okay. So this is something yeah. special. Yeah. So right. for breakfast. Yes. 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 What's for breakfast? What's for breakfast? Good. So any other? Any other? Any other? Yeah. So we have identified two. The distinction in the death of the firstborn sons, then the Israelites asking the Egyptians for precious, precious jewels. There's there's more. And I, I, I want you to know Mother. that the opening statement of God to Moses, there's something in there, something sweet. It's mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. In verse one, it says okay. that. He will let you go from there and he will drive you away completely. And I think this <laughs> is in a situation where he did not want them to leave. Now he will drive <laughs> them out completely. That is the point. For nine times, the heart of Pharaoh had been hardened. So I'm bring, me, I am bringing one more play on him. And you will allow it to go. In fact, he will drive you out. Hey, That's something special. Somebody who was really holding on to the Israelites is now ready to drive them away. So that is that is a third one. Let's try if we can, if we can get the fourth one. Let's try. Let's try. Let's try. Let's try. Let's try. Maybe we can get the fourth one. We can get the fourth one. Something special happening in, in chapter 11. Okay, something special. Well, her Father. Yes, please. I don't know whether it's special, but you see, the Lord or in verse um the Lord the Lord made the Egyptians respect the Israelites. I think it's something you know worth noting. Yes, because normally you really have they to know that. Them. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So they it is one of the points. Mm -hmm. That the slave masters will now look favorably upon the slaves. That even Moses will be seen in a very special light in the eyes of the Egyptian. They saw that he was a prominent man. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's, there's, there's one more that I believe we can look at. If, if, if you look at the, uh, I don't want to give the answer, but somewhere around the verse 8, something, something, something special is there. The verse 8. Not even the dog or bag. Uh, let's come to the verse 8. There's something there. Verse 8. Okay, so verse 8 says, All these ministers of yours will come down to me and bow down before me, saying, Go, you and all who follow you. After that, I will leave. So here, yes, Moses is speaking. 
that you, Pharaoh, all your ministers, all your elders, all the people who are helping you rule, they will come and bow down before me, begging me to leave. If they don't do this, I will not leave. If they do this, I will leave. And this is something very, very special for us to, to note. Now, there's this question I want us to, to see. What is the significance of the final plague announced in Exodus 11? What is the importance of the death of the firstborn sons of the Egyptians? What, what is the significance? What is, it, what is the importance Father, of can that? Can I try? Yeah, yeah please try. Um, for Egypt, the firstborns were the successors. So by getting rid of the firstborn, it means your future is over. That's a very good point. That's a wonderful good point. Can somebody add another? So the Egyptians are people without <laughs> firstborns. So all the Egyptians you see are, ah, they are second bones in Guam. I mean, their ancestors are second bones because the original first bones are all dead. Hmm. Yeah, the significance of, of the of the tenth plague. I see. I see in 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 the death of the of the first born sons. God's supreme judgment over Pharaoh and the Egyptians. For nine times, you never allowed my people to go. Thinking yourself a God, thinking yourself supreme, thinking that, yes, you are powerful. Now that I have dealt this way with your proper successes, then I have judged you. And I've judged you and weighed you in a scale, and you have been found wanting. So the death of the firstborn sons, the tenth plague, was God pronouncing judgment upon the wickedness and the stubborn-hearted nature of Pharaoh and his people. So that will be the significance. That will be the significance. Now there's so much that we can learn from the verse 12. So let us move to the verse 12 quickly. Now in verse 12, what is the whole passage about? What is the whole passage about? This needs a, a short answer. What's the whole passage about? The Passover. The Passover. Now I want you to understand that the Passover is made up of two essential elements. The festival of the Passover is made up of two essential elements. Who will try and give us one? There are two essential elements. Um, Father, may I try? Eleven bread. Yes, please try. The eleven bread. That, that's us. The eleven bread. One. Correct for hundred percent, and the other one. Is it the offering of the firstborn? The offering of the firstborn. This one I'll put it in my fridge. <laughs> I'll put this. I'll put a second answer in the fridge. Okay, so Elaine, Elaine is saying black. Okay, but there's more. There's more. There's more. That's more. Yes. Okay, please. Is somebody answering us? So we've mentioned the unleavened bread and now the second element. The second element. Father, is it the passing of the uh, angel of uh, death to kill the, at night, to kill the uh, Egyptians and spare the the Israelites? Because that's Wonderful the track. Wonderful try. Hey, but please, oh, wait, it's wait, a wonderful wait, try. No, I mean, no, you came. No, mother, no, no, we have a blood yet. My point there is that blood is being used 
to save, and we'll find that in Jesus Christ's blood. I think that's a beautiful theologizing of, of the passage. Wonderful. But that is not the second element ah. of the passage. <laughs> So, 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 if Rabbi Edison Biden has given us the answer, the second element, and she tested it to us, is the sacrificing of the lamb. In fact, it is the sacrificial lamb. So, the lamb, the lamb, and the unliving bread. These are the two essential elements of the Passover feast. Now, I want you to understand that uh, the, the Israelites, as they lived in among the, the Egyptians, they had a lot of customs and rights that they had. But, but God, bringing them out of the land of Egypt, wanted to give them a fresh beginning. And in fact, the Passover feast occurs in the first month of their calendar year. The first month, in the month of Nizan. And they are told that within this month, they are to celebrate the feast of the Passover because God was doing something new for them. So it's like you have entered into the new year. And as you enter into the new year, what must you be reflecting on? What must you be meditating on? What are the things that you want to say to God? And God wants them to know that, see, the first thing that must come to your mind whenever you enter into the new year is to remember the greatest thing that I did for you. How I dealt with Pharaoh and the Egyptians. How I brought you out of the land of To, 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 to use. One, the unleavened bread. Two, the, sacrif the sacrificial lamb. Now, the question comes, what is the unleavened bread? I will be here, unleavened bread. What is the unleavened bread? What is the unleavened bread? The word of God and the communion. Okay. The bread. And, and, and and, uh, and God told them to unleavened, take unleavened, unleavened bread. bread. It's like so what is unleavened bread? bread? Without yeast. Bread without yeast. So unleavened bread, we must all know, is bread without yeast. Bread without yeast. That is unleavened bread. Breast without yeast. Good. Now, what is important again is that you must know that whenever in the, in the, in the in processing of the making of bread, when the flour and everything are mixed and all that, you need to also add yeast and the yeast will make it leaven throughout. So that when you put it into the oven and it is being affected by the heat, the yeast will make the bread do what? Rise. God was telling them that even as you enter into this first month of the year, you must not even have any yeast in your house. You must remove every yeast from every corner of your house because you must now be thinking of how to eat only unleavened bread. Now, why will God not allow them to add yeast to the bread? Hello. Father, there's Hello. no time to leave it to rise. They have to hurry up. There's no time for them to waste as they as they will be waiting for them. No, 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 no. Fast, fast, fast. Oh. Fast, fast, fast. You know, sometimes when boys, boys are preparing and one more. Oh, 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 boys, I mean, boys, boys. No, 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 no. We eat it on the fire. Tell it, oh, are you tell it? Is, is it ready? Is it ready? By the time we realize the food is finished already on the fire, there's no time to waste. Now, God was going to work a miracle, He was going to kill the firstborn sons. Hey, tell you people, you should be ready to move home so you don't have any time to waste. Do not add any yeast. So, I eat it just like that. Good. So, now we move on to the next element, which is the sacrificial lamb. Now, certain instructions were given about the lamb. Let us just get three, 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 three of the instructions about the lamb. What should be the characteristics of the lamb? Hello? 
Hello. Father, it should be a male. Unblemished. The lamb must be a male. Correct. Any other characteristics? And one year old. It should one be one year old. Yeah. Correct. Any other? Let, let, let's mention yeah, the, the characteristics. Unblemished. 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 It means it must not be without any fault. There mustn't be anything wrong with the <laughs> with the lamb. You know, you know, Nigerian movies, Ghanaian movies, when you are going, uh, I mean, when they are going for sacrifice and those things, maybe you go for some consultation from a malam or something, then they'll tell you, Charlie, to bring this and that and that and that. You cannot take a fowl there that has no eye. Hey, master. You are going there with a with, with, with a goat that the leg is not correct. No, 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 no. Sometimes they can even tell you <laughs> that when you are bringing the fowl, it should be all white. Then you go and buy a, a fowl that has got some black this over there, and then you move it. I don't need you, So God says this this lamb must be without blemish. It must be correct. Any other? Any other characteristic? And it can be from either the goat or from the sheep. Yeah, so then we also, Abina is telling us that, that none of the bones of the animal should be broken. Now we are told that when, when this goat is selected, it must stay with the family until the 14th day. Why must the one-year lamb, unblemished lamb, one-year male lamb, which is unblemished, Stay with the family from the first to the fourteenth day. Is there a reason? Is there a reason? Definitely, there is a reason. Who knows? Who knows the reason? Who knows the reason? But so God knew what He was going to do with the Egyptians. He was going to kill their firstborn sons. These firstborn sons were part of the family. They were known by the parents. They were known by the siblings. But God was not going to touch any of the firstborn sons of the, of the Israelites. But still, someone or something must die. Now it was the it was the goat or the sheep, the one year sheep or goat that was going to die. But you see, God wanted them, the Israelites, to, to feel it. I don't want you to look at my things. I don't <laughs> want to. Yes, I'm serious. Uh, don't look at yes. I've, I've muted her. God wanted the Israelites to feel in a way what the Egyptians will feel. So this time around. That one year lamb must stay with you. It must become a part of the family. There was a, uh, there, there was a, uh, a recent movie I watched, The Chosen. It's a series on Netflix. And when this, when this aspect was being enacted, it was during the time of King David. So David went into his royal, into his royal this in ship pen, and he selected the best, the best, the best of the, of the lambs. And, and he brought it to, to his home. And in fact, he will, he will make this lamb live with his children. They'll be playing with it. They'll be feeding it. They'll be giving it water to drink. And for David, this lamb will even, I mean, sleep on his bed. So, so the lamb becomes part of the family. It becomes, in a way, the firstborn son of the family. So now when... On the 14th day of Nisan, when you are killing that sheep, you feel it. Because it's the sheep that you know. It's the sheep that has lived with you and your family. So you feel it. When you're making a sacrifice unto God, you must feel it. Remember, the word sacrifice means giving with pain. So if you give anything, I, oh, wait, I'm sacrificing this. And it is not affecting you in any way. It is not a sacrifice. You have to feel it. So that is why they will be asked to stay with the, with the one-year lamb. So it becomes part of the family. Good. Now, the eating of the, of the 
Okay, so again, they were also told uh, what to do if your household is small. If your household is small, join the nearest this is a neighbor. And in fact, according to their custom, we are told that the, the rabbis will allow a, a minimum of 10 people to share once this in Passover, this in, this in goat or sheep. Then the maximum is 20. So looking at your strength and the number of the people in the family, you do that arrangement. And again, God would describe through Moses how they were supposed to do it. They were to eat the unleavened bread with the roasted lamb with bitter leaves. Bitter leaves. You see, everything is, is, is about hurriedness. They were just in a hurry. Now, if you are eating bitter leaves, will you take your time and say, you know, I will eat it? Share bitter leaves. You see the way we take medicines? I mean, bitter medicines. How sometimes you want to give medicine to your child and the child would not want the medicine to even touch the, the, the tongue. So it opens it and it just drops it down like it goes. The thing is bitter. So God wanted them to know that, see, everything must be done in haste because you are moving from Egypt to the promised land. So that is the, the narration that will be given to us. Now, Hello. Hello. Father, can you please repeat the question? I lost you momentarily. Yes. What was to be done with the blood that came from the sacrificial lamb? Oh, okay. They should use hyssop to sprinkle it on the lintel of their homes and on the two uh, doorposts. Yes. So the, the, the door posts, the lentils, and on of the door. Now, one biblical scholar says that, you see, the description of, of, of this act looks like the cross. So you have your lentil. But the one at the top, when you put it there, it, it will drip. And as the blood is dripping, it is forming a vertical line. So already it is crossing the top part of your lentil, making it a cross. Remember, the door is like this, okay? It's like this. Now, the beam at the top, another pot of blood is going to be put at the top, and at the top, it will trickle down. So from the beam, the horizontal beam there, there you have the cross beam sign. And it is the sign that when the angel of destruction sees it, it will pass over you so that no destruction come upon you. And dear people of God, the application of the blood is very, very important. You see, and here, God, God will let Moses tell the people that, see, any household that does not do this, even if they are Israelites, the, the faith of the Egyptians will be meted out on them. And surprisingly, even if they were Egyptians, and maybe by the association with some Hebrews who maybe love them so much, actually, this is what you have been told. Though. So if please you also do something like that on your door. So even if you are Egyptian and you did that, it meant that you will be saved. Because the only thing that will differentiate would, would, that will differentiate you will be the mark of the blood of the lamb on your doorpost. Okay, people of God, this is a very simple question I want to ask you. Today. Can you say that your family is marked by the blood of the lamb? Not any other lamb, but the lamb of God. The one that John the Baptist will point out. It will be very, very important that if you have not marked your wounds with the blood of the lamb, then this evening, before we end the Bible discussion, we pray that Jesus Christ himself will mark the doorpost of our houses with his blood. Because see, there must be a passing over of the many troubles that you are going through, of the many bad omens that have been directed to us. We also need to be marked by the blood of the Lamb of God. So those who did it were spared. Now, some rules were given about strangers and uh, foreigners who were who, when you say, are not listen, Israelites. 
But if they wanted to share in the in the Passover feast, there's certain things they had to do. And number one thing was that they just had to be circumcised. The male in that household had to be circumcised. What is circumcision now in our present dispensation? Circumcision now is baptism. For you to be part of the family of God, for you to be part of the family of the church, for you to be part of the saints and the angels, then the waters of baptism, thicker than any blood, should have been poured over you. And remember, in our rite of baptism, there's a time when the foreheads of our little ones or those who are going to be baptized are marked with the sign of the cross. Because believe you me, if you do not have the cross with you, the many will be the troubles that will come upon you and you will not be able to stand. I just pray that the Lord will mark us with his blood because it is the blood that will save us. Because out of this beautiful act of God, slaves will become free people. Yeah. So these are a few things that we learn from chapter 12. I want to open the floor to two comments. What have, what have you realized or what are you taking home from either Exodus chapter 11 or Exodus chapter 12? So two comments. What are you taking home? What do you want to reflect with, with us on? And as we do this, I'll be very happy if we can start typing in our intentions for today's evening prayer. Please let us be typing in our intentions for today's evening prayer. So Patty has raised her hand. Patty, please, yes. you can speak to us. Please Father, let us keep our intentions coming. One thing I find very interesting is God asking the Israelites to collect jewelry from the people. Because it means that before they left, he equipped them with some wealth so that when they go, they will have something to hold on to because they had been slaves. They didn't have anything. And I learned from this that God always provides for us. And sometimes he provides in a way that we don't have to give back. So that's one lesson I have learned. Thank you so much for our patience. So in fact, remember, as a slave, when you work, you are not paid, right? Because you were bought at a price. So the slave will never be paid. If you have a very good master, he will only take good care of you. So in a way, as they were leaving, God was giving them the payment of all the hard work that they have done. God made the Egyptians favorable unto them. Allegi gold, the silver, the diamond, the way. Yes, because they, have, they had worked themselves up. At the tail end, we'll be told the number of years that they stayed in Egypt, a total of 430 years. Hey! Yeah, those years, yeah, the beginning of those years, are enjoyment too. Joseph was there, prime minister. Jacob, please, daddy Jacob, please come with my brothers and sisters. And when they were coming, they were 70. They were 70. Now, they have stayed 430 years. When they were moving out, they are about 600,000. And remember, there were other races, other congregations that had joined them. So the generosity of the, of the Egyptians was like payment for the things that they have done for the great nation of Egypt. Any other contribution? Any other contribution? Please keep your intentions coming. Any other contribution? Any other contribution? Any other contribution? Okay, so as I wait your next contribution, you know we have always been talking about the the plates of Egypt being uh, an attack on the on the gods of the Egyptians, and we have mentioned a lot of the of their gods who were attacked by the plates that God brought upon them. So the tenth plate, the death of the firstborn sons, which God was being attacked. And the answer is simple. The God being attacked is Pharaoh. Among the Egyptians, Pharaoh is a God. He's a deity. He's a divine being. And they worshipped him. They adored him. 
Incense was burnt unto him. So when God attacked the firstborn sons, Pharaoh's firstborn son, the one who should have who would have been king after him, God was attacking Pharaoh. So they say, You have no power. You you are here, but who will take after you when you are no longer here? Me, I've killed him. I've killed your future God, and you you are nothing in my hands. So God was attacking Pharaoh himself. After all, he had been the most stubborn for the people found in the land of Egypt. So God was attacking Pharaoh. Any other contribution? Any other contribution? Yes, Father. I was yes, wondering, I think I asked this question the last time. How God can make Pharaoh stubborn all this time and now allows him to, I know that this punishment is severe, but still, why did God not do it earlier? Why did they have to go? <laughs> and then, more importantly, asking the Israel Israelites to take the gold and silver from the Egypt. They are going on a journey where they are walking. It's heavy. Why should they carry on burdens that are heavy? And precisely, precisely what he gave them was what they used against him when they made they <laughs> melted the, the gold and made their uh, golden cup. So I get didn't, right. God, didn't God see that coming? God sees everything. Yes, yeah, so and why he, he, he let them? Okay, okay. So God sees everything. God knows everything. And we must we must never rule out the the, the idea or the reality of of this thing, you know, free will, free will. Mommy, I have given you, I can give you a gun as a gift and to be for you uh, an instrument of protection. But you can also turn it into an instrument of suicide. You can turn it into an instrument of mega. So yes, I can give you a cutlass. You can turn it into an agricultural implement, using it to do your farm. But you can also use it to kill. So it's about what you choose to do with what God gives you. God can give you riches and you can use those riches to serve other people. God can give you riches and you can use those riches to do something very wicked. I mean, hiring people to do all the bad stuff and because yes, you have the resources. So this one, we cannot blame God. We have to blame the people. Because they chose to do what they wanted to do. We are human beings, we have free will, and God will not, I mean, force us to do what, what, what he wants us to do. No, he will not force us. He wouldn't. But remember, it was not everybody who used their earrings, their jewelry to make the molten calf. No. But some people will not be part of it. It was a choice they made. So the other people who chose to do what they wanted to do, and others said, no, we are not going to do it. So it is always the choice that you have to make. Uh, so this question that somebody asks, why, why 10 plates? Why not just one or two? And I think I gave the answer that, see, if you do something, one, and I, I think this was the example I gave. So maybe we are, we are playing football and somebody gives a high cross. Then out of the blue, I just jump and I give a bicycle kick back into, into the net. No, 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 It can be local. <laughs> it can be local. But you give me seven of those passes, and I'm able to give, I mean, five bicycle kicks and all enters into them. Then there you know that, ah, don't have an involved. So when you do something repeatedly, then we are sure that, yes, you know how to do it. We know who you are. At the very beginning of the place, God will make us understand that, see, he's going to bring potence. And that the heart of, 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 of Pharaoh will be hardened. In fact, he will harden the heart of Pharaoh. But here also there is the element of choice. So that Pharaoh will know that there is a God who is great. That the Egyptians will know that there is a God who is great. That everybody will know that there is a God who is great. So God did this so that people will come to know that among all the gods that they have heard about in the land of Egypt and the neighboring country, there's one who can humble all of them. And it will not take one plague, to not take two plagues, to not take three plagues to achieve this. Then, round number, efforts, 
Wayan de baku 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 edu. Edu. So that's why God will go to him, up to the tenth plague. So that we all know that he's a powerful God. And whatever he says, he will do it. Whatever he says, he will do it. So these uh, these are the responses that I'll give to the, the questions that you have asked. So it Thank is time you. for so Thank it is time for us. I say thank you. It's actually clearer to me now. I accept that. Oh, okay, okay. We thank God. We thank God. We thank God. We thank. God. Yes. So it's time for us to pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Yesterday we celebrated the birthday of our Mother Mary, but because it was a Sunday, we we're unable to celebrate it well. Let us offer three Hail Marys unto our dear Mother. That as he she was born into this world, so as to give birth to Jesus Christ, our Savior, the Lamb of God, who will die and use his blood to cover us, so that evil will not attend to us. We ask that she will also continue to intercede for all the intentions that we'll be praying for. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, 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 Mother of God, Mother we pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, 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 Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Holy Mary, Mary Mother, Mother of God, God pray, pray for us in the now and the hour of our death. Our of our death. Amen. 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 Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As, as it was in the beginning, it's now and ever shall, shall be, God without end. Amen. 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 Let us pray for the following intentions. Almighty God, we pray for the Holy Spirit's direction. We pray that in all that mm -hmm. we do, in all that we say, we allow the Holy Spirit to move us. That the Holy Spirit will motivate us in all that we do. Let us remember to pray for all who are candidates, our children who are writing examinations. May wisdom be granted unto them, knowledge, retentive memory. We ask that the Lord will deliver them from all sicknesses, from all diseases. That they may be in the right frame of mind as they write their examinations. We pray for God's healing for the sick. Pray for God's strength for the weak. And we're asking that God will grant us peace. Peace in our individual minds and hearts. Peace in our marriages. Peace in our family lives. Peace at our workplace. And also peace in our nation, Ghana, especially as we prepare for the general elections. We also pray thanking God for a very successful and fruitful Sacred Heart Congress at Tamale. We thank him for the traveling mercies that he granted to all our delegates in and out. We ask that all the increases that were bestowed upon them as we interact with them, we too may have a share in those graces. We pray that the Lord God will also restore us unto glory, that all the good things that we have lost, he will grant it back unto us. We ask for his divine direction. We pray for God's perfection. We also pray that the Lord will watch over all of us and vindicate us in the sight of all those who oppress us. We pray that as apples of the eye of God, he will watch and protect us. We pray thanking God for all his mercies and for all his favors. And all the answered prayers that he has granted unto us. Continue to pray that the Lord Jesus will protect us with his blood. We pray for God's blessings, guidance and protection for our children, especially as they go to school. Pray that nothing evil will happen to them. We continue to pray that the Lord God will guide and order our steps and protect all of us from the plots, from all the traps and schemes of the enemies at our workplaces. We continue to pray that the Lord will deliver us from the hands of our enemies. We pray for the peaceful repose of the souls 
of all our family members, of all our friends, of all our parishioners, of the souls of Mr. Sylvester Panya and Mr. Samuel Kofi, and also the people that you know who have recently died. May their souls rest in peace. We pray also for the poor, the sick, and the needy, that through our generosity, through our charity, the Lord will meet them at their point of need. We also pray that you may be faithful to one another. We ask for God's healing mercies. We pray for our nation, Ghana. We pray for all our leaders. We pray for our nation, Ghana. We pray for all our leaders. May wisdom, knowledge, understanding will be granted unto them. We also pray that the Lord will forgive every sin that you have committed. May he wash us clean. We pray for all those who are suffering from all forms of cancer and chronic illnesses. Your word tells us that by your wounds and by your stripes we are healed. Lord, intervene in their situation. We pray for emotional, psychological healing for all those who are suffering. We also pray that the Lord will mark us out and make us distinct from the people who belong to the devil. May his light shine upon us and may his favor and protection be our, our, our portion. We pray for the soul of Frank Harbert Jr. We pray that the Lord will help us to discern what is right. Pray for all our children. We also pray for marital breakthrough. Our youth who are searching that the Lord will come to their aid. Pray for all those who are celebrating their birthdays, that the Lord will continue to bless and keep them always. We now pray for your intention. Whatever that you desire from God, may you receive it. His word says that ask and we shall receive. Knock it will be open. We should search and we'll find. Whatever that you are asking from the Lord in your heart now, whatever that you are searching for, whatever that you are knocking, whatever door on which you are knocking may be open unto you. May the Lord come to our aid and grant us all those things that will make us truly happy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it Thank was in the beginning. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with, with your, your spirit. spirit. The blessings of the Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down and remain upon you now and forever. Amen. 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 Yes. Thank you. So Father. thank you so much thank for joining you. this evening's thank discussion. You, Father. So we'll continue nice. next week. And next week for sure, Father, I can still be with us. Yes. So thank you <laughs> thank so you, much. Father. Have a thank very wonderful evening. So thank, thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.